Moby Dick, it is not uncliched to say, is about many things. Vengeance, desire, obsession, race, homosexuality, modernism, globalism, the environment, things worldly and things philosophical. It is all those things. I also think it is a response to the Mexican-American War. Before the politically divisive Iraq War and the even more politically divisive Vietnam War, there was the Mexican-American War. Intellectuals, transcendentalists, and abolitionists in the late 1840s hated the war. Thoreau, in his essay Civil Disobedience, wrote, The government itself, which is only the mode which the people have chosen to execute their will, is equally liable to be abused and perverted before the people can act through it. Witness the present Mexican War, the work of a comparative the work of comparatively a few individuals using the standard government as their tool. For, in the outset, people would not have consented to this measure. Emerson wrote in the Massachusetts Quarterly Review about the Mexican-American War, the country needs to be extricated from its delirium at once. Herman Melville also hated the war. His protest took the form of a satirical article titled Authentic Anecdotes of Old Zack, mocking the war hero general who would become president. Throughout the series, General Taylor engages in a series of ridiculous battlefield actions, such as defusing a Mexican mortar shell while his men go running. All of the links are there. The Mexican-American War, one of the most important political events of the 1840s, ended in 1847. Moby Dick was released in 1851. Mexico pre- Mexico's president, Santa Ana, only had one leg, just as Ahab. And we know in the community that Melville lived, New England, many of Melville's contemporaries and literary heroes hated the war. We know, looking at the articles Melville wrote, that Melville himself hated the war. But Ahab is all the proof we need. Blinded by desire for revenge and glory, Captain Ahab mirrors General Taylor and President Polk, pushing for expansion, fighting for war with the naive desire to increase the size of America regardless of the cost. The cost? 13,000 dead Americans, approximately 25,000 dead or wounded Mexicans, and, the eventua- and eventually the Civil War, pushed forward by territorial pressure. As a nation, we've forgotten the Mexican-American War. By and large, the American public remembers three wars, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, and World War II. We forget the rest, consigning them to footnotes in history textbooks. We're already forgetting the Vietnam War. And as we forgot the Mexican-American War, we forgot that Moby Dick was railing against it. Taken two college courses on Moby Dick. I've read numerous articles, listened to public radio programs and interviews, and I just scoured 250 pages of annotation in my critical edition of the book. Never heard anyone connect Moby Dick to the Mexican-American War, even though we know that Melville despised or certainly mocked General Taylor and that Moby Dick came out four years after that hugely consequential war ending. Not surprising we forgot, considering that the novel was ignored for 50 years. By that time, the Civil War was the only war that mattered historically. How could they not be connected? Which brings me to my tangential conclusion, the crux and purpose of this essay. I wonder when we, as a society, will forget the current wars, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. I know we will, it's just a matter of time, when they too will become footnotes in history. But these wars will inspire great works of art. They already have. In time, their connection to current events will be forgotten. But like Moby Dick and Cap and Ahab, at least the art and the lesson will remain. <laughs>